Hi there, and welcome to the Planet Zoo Every Animal Franchise Zoo. The concept of the zoo is that we're playing in franchise mode and we are going to eventually have every animal in the game in this one zoo. We're working through in alphabetical order and so far we've got most of the A's in now. This week we're building new habitats for quite a selection of animals, some from the tropics, some from the colder regions and some from the desert. Today we're building the first big indoor habitat space which is holding the arctic foxes and wolves but firstly I've been through a little remodeling because there were some issues with the guests. Hunger, thirst and toilet needs were starting to get a little out of control so I've been squeezing in vendor machines where I can. It helped stem the wave of disappointment and complaints I've been getting because they're always hungry, thirsty and need the bathroom. Something else I've fixed is the issue I was getting with the American bison habitat and the guest pathing. So more facilities down here. Very popular toilet this one. Up the stairs. This was originally just supposed to be for viewing the penguins but people kept using it to view the bison which was giving them a terrible view so I've extended this out a bit. Squeezed in even more vendor machines and a bunch of cash machines as well so they've got money to pay for them and those that are inclined to come up here to look at the bison and the pronghorns and whatnot, the view's not so bad now. Like these idiots here. There's a better view down there, you know. Oh well, AI's gonna AI end of the day, isn't it? So we've got this in here now to resolve that problem. The zoo's functioning a little bit better since I made those changes. Not so many angry guests anymore, which is good. That's sorted, time to look at the next animals going in. Today we're starting off with the arctic foxes and the arctic wolves. These guys live in cold tundra biomes so this is going to be our first indoor exhibit. Enclosures that need permanent snow feel like that would be indoors because it just feels a little bit more realistic that if you're going to have to produce snow on a regular basis you'd want to climate control that wouldn't you? So this section opposite the Amor leopard we're going to build an indoor exhibit. I've quite heavily edited the speed build on this one because in all honesty it took me about three and a half hours to get the whole thing completed. Nobody's going to watch all that so I'm going to talk about some of the design choices rather than showing the whole build. What we've got going on here is basically what I call the skeleton. This is getting the layout right, putting the pathing in, putting in any facilities. I've learned the hard way, you put these in first. Next up, still a part of that skeleton, is the habitat layout as well. There's nothing worse than you've spent an age on an elaborate building and then you go to put the animals in and they're complaining there's not enough room. You want to get that nailed down before you start building the building itself. The building design, I've gone with a modified version of a building I've already created. Uh, it's one that I used for the aquatics race and also it was the bus station in my city zoo as well. This is a good mix of plaster, Indian stone and glass and it works really well for big buildings like this that there's going to be a lot of open space. I made a choice with this one not to have any skylights in the roof because I'm going to put extracts up there which is going to house the coolers. These habitats for the arctic animals they need to be quite cold otherwise the snow melts. So I thought it'd be a pretty cool idea to <laughs> cool idea. <laughs> Anyway, I thought it'd be a cool idea to have the coolers up in the roof rather than on the ground and it still works the same. If you have it higher up, the ground still gets as cold as if you had it on the ground. What I'm getting at is because I haven't got the roof lights in, there's very little natural light getting into the enclosures. So that's why I've put windows at the back and the build itself is very glass heavy. The barriers you'll notice they're very minimal these are custom barriers but it's just purely glass and very little decoration because the building itself if you put too much decoration in here it's going to start taking over the space and it'll start feeling very enclosed. This sort of concept where it's mostly glass it helps open the space out a little bit we're not going concept heavy on the inside. The roof comprises corrugated panels on the outside and plaster on the inside so it is double skinned. That's purely for the aesthetics. Leaving the dark corrugated roof in um, bare on the inside, it would look very dark and oppressive again. It bugs me ever so slightly that the plaster, when you put that on the inside of a building, it gives off this vaguely yellow glow, like a yellowy greeny glow, and there's nothing you can do about that to change it. But the white plaster certainly looks better than leaving that with the bare black metal. 
this point, I'm done with the building. Well, mostly done with the building. And it's time for the animals to go in. So Arctic foxes go first. And it's on to manipulating the landscape. Get this looking a little bit more snowy. First thing for this is adding that ventilation system I talked about before. So putting, this is from the conservation park. You, we've got brand new venting that looks so good. This is ideal for trying to hide that HVAC system into, well, indoor exhibits at least anyway. With the coolers in, that meant the habitat got nice and cold and I could add that snow and it wouldn't disappear. For the hard shelter, now technically the whole building is counted as a hard shelter, but I figured why not have a hard shelter within a hard shelter it's to do with the theming, so got the old faux rocks out and built a little shelter here for them in the corner. Also put in a little faux rock feature wall at the back. It gives the whole enclosure a little depth. When you've got enclosures that are just a square box, it can look a little stale unless you've got something at the back like this. For the foliage, now when I used to build stuff for the Arctic biome years ago, it was always very flat and very restricted because there really wasn't that much in the game in the way of plants and trees for this biome. But over the years, they've added more and more stuff for this biome and it's fantastic now. I actually enjoy building in the snow biomes again. My problem with this one is obviously enclosed space. All of the trees in the game are relatively tall and I didn't want the trees poking through the roof. It would just look weird. So I've sunk some into the ground and just limited the choices that I could use on the trees. Nothing too tall. It would look too weird if you sunk a really tall tree into the ground and you've only got the tip of it at the top. So that's the Arctic foxes in. We've got a bit of colour variation going on with the foxes. So we've got one white one and a little dusty one here as well. They're very happy with the space. Plenty of room. Too much room right now, but I know what they breed like. They're going to need the room. Following the foxes, I've gone through the same process with the wolves. So we'll take a look, but actually, do you know what? We'll go outside and take a look at the whole building in one piece. Oh, wait. Is that an alarm? Oh, no. There's an, oh, what's that alarm for? Oh, I see. Escape. You're not supposed to be able to get up here. What's going on? This enclosure is deliberately set up so that they can't get onto that wall because I knew they could escape if they did. Well, you're proud of yourself. You're scaring all the guests away. Guess I should pause and figure out how you got out. It's the climbing frame. It was in the wrong place, so I, I moved it. And obviously that made it active or something. Let's move this back and out of harm's reach. We can't have them going out like that. No harm done. They're boxed up now, ready to go back. Why are you still screaming? It's contained. Back in the habitat with you. Oh, wait, why is the keeper screaming? You, you, literally, you're in there all day, no problem. Suddenly you're scared of a blooming box. Oh, does this go deeper? Uh, where's the other one? Oh, are they sleep? They must be sleeping. Let's see. Hmm. <laughs> oh no, they're not sleeping. <laughs> um, oh, let's see. This one's going back in. Right. This is where we need to check. Where where are all kitties gone? So animals, nothing there. Well, that's a problem. There should be two. There's the one back we caught on the fence. What about your buddy? <sighs> right. Okay. Let's just pause so we can sort this out. Go to animals. I'm a leopard. Still escaped. Let's see. Click on you. Right. Okay. So. <laughs> um... You're in the elephant enclosure. Oh, naughty kitty. What have you been up to? I swear. I hope you haven't killed an elephant. The, all that work I put in. Okay, one. And over here. One, two. Oh dear, there should be five. <laughs> Let's check the hard shelter. Please, 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 please. There they are. Oh, thank goodness for that. I thought my elephants were dead. You are very lucky, Mr. Leopard. Gone on a jolly to the elephant habitat. Honestly. 
Here we go. Safely back. Disaster averted. Oh, but there we go. <laughs> Dirty protest going on there. Let's um, let's not look at that. Right. What were we doing? Oh, oh yeah. We were going to look around the um, the new building, weren't we? Oh, okay. Right. Back on track. So a nice new space here, dedicated to the Arctic animals that we have in the zoo so far. Added some more information desks and some more toilets and stuff in here as well. I am learning. Franchise mode, you've got to go overkill with the facilities. Looks like the staff have all gone for break at the same time. Guess I need to hire more staff. The other side of the balcony is an overlook onto the two enclosures there. So you've got views from below and from above. Wolves there giving a bit of a howling chorus for us through the underside. So this is the completed Arctic wolf habitat. Decoration in here, pretty much the same as the foxes. Let's see, where are you? There you are. Who's a good boy? You're a good boy, aren't you? Oh, aren't they so pretty? Giving our guests a good view there. And where's the other one? There you are. That's the female, I believe. Again, with the wolves, plenty of space in here if we do end up getting a lot more pups. That's the entirety of our Arctic habitat for now. It's time to move on to our next one, which is the Asian otter. Asian otter is another shared habitat species, so benefits from enrichment with other animals and quite a few of them. I've done another spreadsheet for this, same as I did for the African animals, just to see which ones are best placed together for an optimum outcome. For the otter, that means they only place with the Malayan tapir in this case. So I'll be building the new otter and tapir habitat right here next to the builder we just did. For this habitat, I'm structuring it very similar to how I did the African penguin habitat. So it's going to be split level. We've got a walkway on top so that guests get a good view even at the higher points. There's an underwater viewing area at the front. And like the African penguin, that means we need to use a glass barrier here. The only difference is this one's curved. So a little more tricky than the straight one that we did for the African penguin. Getting the water in, it's the same concept as we had with the penguins. You just have to build the terrain up with the terrain stamp and make sure it crosses through the barrier so that you can get the water in and that's what creates that two level terrain. Barrier at the back is another custom one. For this one, because the Asian otter and the Malayan tapir are tropical animals, I've gone with the wood log walls for this one. Guest barrier at the front, I've made a sort of tropical fence in here because the Asian otter and the tapir, they don't need a very high barrier. I think it's like 1 meter, 1.25 meters is the height that they can't escape from. So I've kept this low to make sure guests have a good view with them. I've also got a perimeter fence right up to the line where the guest path starts. The rock work I've added to this habitat. I've stolen this from the Alpine Ibex enclosure that we made a couple of weeks ago. Reuse and repurpose is definitely my motto. My idea with the rock work in this habitat was to break up the space a little bit, not go overboard with the rocks, but just break up the space so that those different levels didn't look too harsh. The hard shelter, this is a mix of wood log walls. And for the roof, that's a wood plank roof piece, I believe. I will admit, I think the shelter's more suited for the tapir than it is for the otter. I struggle building hard shelters for the really tiny animals like the otter because they just get swallowed up in big enclosures like this, but their hitboxes are still quite big. So for the animals that are small but don't have a burrow, it would be nice if you could make some sort of really small wooden box for them to sleep in and stuff. But hey ho, it doesn't exist, so we have to go with bigger shelters that they can get in and out of like this. So that's the general layout of this enclosure. Split level, underwater viewing, and a viewing area on top as well. Time to add the animals. Terrain-wise, the animals weren't that fussy. They wanted a little bit of grass, a little bit of sand, some soil. A good mix there, really. For the vegetation, I had the luxury of both the tapir and the otter like a lot of vegetation in their habitat. So I could really go to town on putting lots of tropical, colourful plants in here. And, you know, I think that does wonders for bringing a habitat like this to life. 
since they were so comfortable with a lot of vegetation, I spent a little time doing the underwater plants as well. I tend to not do that. I tend to go for very harsh concrete kinds of underwater areas, but this time I was like, because it was more natural with the rock, spend a little bit of time putting the planting in down there as well. I tweaked the watercolour just a little bit to take away some of the transparency and let that blue shine through. Makes it look a little bit more tropical. And here is the final result. At the front lower barrier, we've got the education and some enrichment items there. Then you move into the underwater barrier bit. I tried lowering the barrier a little more so that it was flush with the water, but the otters kept escaping. So no, we, we had to get rid of that and have it a little bit higher. There's the tapirs. Considering they're monochrome, they actually feel quite bright, don't they? And let's see if we can find an otter. They're difficult to keep track of because they're so quick and tiny. Yep, there they go. They're off. Going for a swim. Nope, but the tapir is. I feel bad really because I don't think the tapirs like deep water. So they're stuck with the deep water. This is far too deep for a tapir. They shouldn't be able to swim in this. I, I feel like that's not possible. Yeah, and those guests coming to the zoo, it's like, oh, what did you see at the zoo? I saw half a tapir in the water. Also, I've got a fish feeder in here, but I don't think it's working because I think I need to drop the level just a little bit more for that to work. But for now, I think I'm going to call this one done. So on to the next habitat. Next up is an exhibit habitat, the axolotl. We already planned that space out last episode, so let's move on to the next one, which is the Bactrian camel. Camel's another species that benefits from enrichment with another animal, the Chevalsky's horse. So another two for one. A lot of those in this episode, isn't there? Placement wise, we're moving back over into this corner of the zoo again. There's that existing space we've made for the axolotl. We'll get that put in soon. Next door to this, there's not many people using the food court here at the moment, although that might change because this corner here is where we are going to put the camels and the horses. For this enclosure, doing this a bit differently than we did for the last one, it's all flat land, no water requirements. The camels in particular are very fussy about the vegetation, so it is going to be quite empty as well. Now, for the style of this enclosure, I've gone quite tactical with this. In my starter habitat series, I've already developed habitats for both the camels and the horses. I just never realized they could be housed together before. And weirdly, the style that I used for both the horse and the camel in the past is exactly the same. So maybe cheating a little bit, I'm reusing all of those pieces for the hard shelter and whatnot for this enclosure. Yes, that was limited to the base game pieces, but it was still a good quality build. So hey, why not reuse it? The wooden fence barrier for this enclosure, now strictly speaking, you wouldn't get one like that in a zoo because you can touch the animals. But the horse and the camel have this unique combination where they can't jump over anything taller than 1.25 meters. And they both hold the trait of having confidence with guests. So guests being right up to the barrier isn't going to bother them in the slightest. Don't need the one way glass with these guys. In light of that, I'm making use of it and going for a nice little wooden fence here. Kind of ranch style, I guess. So completed enclosure. Very sandy. There was a very fine balance on the terrain for this one. And as I was saying, a camel's very confident with humans. So right up against the barrier there. Should be getting me some nice five star reviews from the guests on that one. Of course, in with the camels is the horses too. Just two horses needed in the enclosure. I absolutely adore it when animals use the grab balls and they just plonk it down like that. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that is the combo habitat for the horse and the camel. Nice, quick and easy build for me on that one. Partially because I reused an awful lot of stuff from some of my other builds. So with that one gone. Oh, we need to look at the axolotl, don't we? Yeah, I've put them in. So back behind the food court area, squeeze our way past the guests, axolotl habitat, and let's see if we can find one, take a look at them. They're tiny little creatures, so sometimes difficult to find. Where are you? <laughs> no, not around that corner. Right. Only way to do this, um, you open it up the habitat and check the animal itself. Okay. Right, show yourself. 
Around the back, maybe. Aha, there you are. Hiding. Look how tiny they are. I bet you could probably get a fair few of these in one tank. Gonna need it. I feel like these poor guys not getting their money's worth, are they? They're not seeing any axolotl from the front there. Sorry about that. Maybe next year when we've got a few more. Okay, so yes, another animal boxed off then. That means we should check out what's next. Hi kids, I already know what's next, I checked. Bird's tapir. And wouldn't you know it, this tapir also can be housed with other animals for enrichment bonuses. So I got the old spreadsheet out, did more calculations and figured out tapir goes best with the capuchin monkey. So yeah, another two for one. Quite a lot of these going on recently. The question now is, where are we going to put them? It feels like this section of the zoo we're in now has had quite a lot of development recently and we probably should be spreading out at a more balanced rate. So I think it's time to go back to this corner of the zoo, set up a new work zone, get yet more facilities in, get the capuchin and tapir right on this corner. Yeah, that'll do. But that will have to wait for next episode because we've come to a nice natural stopping point at this stage. As ever, thank you so much for watching. I really do hope that you're enjoying this series. Catch you in the next episode.